With victories over Illinois and Minnesota long in the rearview mirror, the Indiana basketball team welcomed Beta Buffo Northwestern to Assembly Hall. Could the Hoosiers snap a three-game skid and pick up their fourth conference victory? And with the rivalry battle approaching, we hit the streets to ask students a very important question. Exactly how much do they hate Purdue? All this and more coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome into this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Samantha Daywig, alongside my co-host AJ Shoup. And AJ, it seems as if the basketball team has finally started to turn things around. Two wins against two ranked opponents and a great effort against Michigan State. You know, Sam, I, I couldn't agree with you more. While the Hoosiers pulled off a couple of thrilling upsets this season, they have not fared well against the conference's worst teams. Going into Saturday's game against Northwestern, IU was a combined 1-5 against Iowa, Michigan, Penn State, and the Wildcats. Obviously not good enough to earn a postseason berth of any kind. Let's get to the highlight. Here's John Sherna and the Wildcats putting on a passing clinic early against the Hoosiers. Let's count them. There's one, two, three passes get to Sherna who hits the open tray. Big John Sherna with 19 points on the evening. Let's do it again. Here's Sherna to Marco Tulio to Juice Thompson and Juice. Swish. And if some is good, more is better. Juice pushing it up the floor again, and he's squeezing fresh lemons and making lemonade. Those are just three of Northwestern's seven three-pointers in the game. Uh, let's show four. Why not? Luka Merkovic hitting the three and gesturing to the IU crowd as he goes down the court. We'll move to the second half. Here's Will Sheehy hitting a wide-open Christian Watford who goes up and under for the deuce. Seawatt bringing the Hoosiers within five. Now. Wofford again, trying to bring it within three. Puts up the jump shot. Broken hand? What broken hand? IU within three. Verdell Jones pushing the ball up the court, and he'll find Derek Elson, who opens up a fresh package of Dunkaroos. Elson had 11 boards to go with that delicious dunk. Now Northwestern trying to put some distance from long distance. Drew Crawford hitting the tray. He's not even defended. Northwestern pushes their lead to five. Lead now back down to three for Northwestern, and Juice Thompson pushing it in, and he'll take a jump shot over Jeremiah Rivers, and that'll seal it. Northwestern 70, IU 64. Welcome back into Assembly Hall, where the Hoosiers are coming off of a tough loss to the Wildcats in Northwestern, 70 to 64, and the overwhelming theme of this game was the lack of defense by the Hoosiers. Absolutely, it's been a struggle lately for the Hoosiers on defense, and especially tonight, the perimeter defense just wasn't there. Northwestern got all the threes they wanted to. Green went as far away of calling out freshman Vic Oladipo for his lack of effort. He only got in the game for eight minutes. And we'll send it out to Green to talk more on the defense. Our biggest problem tonight was, was uh, exposed in the first half when there's not enough um, team accountability on the defensive end. And, and a coach can sub and, and uh, try to do that. And we can practice all week and we can have great practices and all those types of things. But defensive-minded players do not accept when teammates on the court are not defending the way that they need to defend. We're now joined by Daily Northwestern beat writer Robbie Levin. And, and Robbie, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the chippiness that we saw between these two teams. I mean, two of the bottom-tier teams in the Big Ten, but now in a series that Indiana always crushed Northwestern in, you know, Northwestern's had some big wins the last couple of years, and do you think there's a little bit of an, a rivalry getting going? Well, you know, I think, at, like you said, AJ, Northwestern has, uh, over the past three years, Northwestern is 5-1 and one against Indiana. Um, and I think, you know, there might, be, uh, there might be something developing between these two teams, and we saw it in the first half there with, um, you know, with, after Luka Mirkovic made the three and, and he put up that sign, and then uh, Pritchard came back with the dunk. Um, and I think, I mean, you know, it's a late-season game on the road, a game that Northwestern really needs to win for postseason consideration. Um, so I think... You know, they and they had come out over after a big win over Iowa, so I definitely think this was important for Northwestern, and everyone on the team knew it. As these two teams improve, the rivalry is only going to expand. Let's send it out to Jordan Hulls and see what he had to say. 
definitely. I mean, we're all competitors. We all want to win, and uh, we're doing whatever it takes to win. So, um, but obviously, we didn't do that well enough in the first half tonight. Well, Robbie, officiating has been a big question in the Big Ten throughout the season. A lot of skeptics out there saying that the refs just aren't doing their jobs. There were a lot of close calls in this game, and have you seen this throughout the season also? Yeah, well, Lucas, I think you know you make it, you bring up a good point tonight. Um, there were a lot of questionable calls, and Northwestern certainly racked up the fouls. Davide Carletti fouled out. Uh, John Sherno played the final eight minutes of the game with four fouls. Um, to be honest, I haven't really noticed it as much the rest of the season, but tonight it was it was very evident. And um, you know, when a game is tightly officiated, there's nothing either team can do. Robbie, you're exactly right. When a game is being called this closely by the officials and you're down by three with 30 seconds left, you have to make your free throws. That's the bottom line. And Coach Crean had a lot to say about that after the game as well. Well, I think the way the game was being called, you, you, you're looking at it, especially in the second half, because here we go again in the second half, and, and, and uh, there was no way we could allow this thing to be what had happened in some of our previous road games, where the free throw discrepancy is just ridiculous. In the, in, the, in the second halves. So if they're going to call it that way, we've got to keep doing everything we can do to, to, to match, to get into that bonus. Another issue with the Hoosiers all season long, and especially tonight, is coming out slow. They could not get it going in the first half, fell way behind, and despite a nice second half run, they weren't able to finish it off. Yeah, and IU really did lose this game right off the bat in the first half when they just, they just couldn't get it going. And I don't, know, I don't know what it was, they had a whole week to prepare but it just, it just wasn't there effort-wise, and Northwestern kept hitting big shots. Luckily for IU, they came out with that tenacity in the second half, and hit, Jordan Holes hit a couple big threes, Riddell had a couple big shots, but it just wasn't enough. It seems like the never-ending story for the Hoosiers on the season. Let's go out and see what the team had to say. Yeah, we knew we, we played terrible in the first half. Uh, the defense was not good at all. Uh, we were ready to get back out there and, and stop them and start playing you know, the way we had, were started out to play. So a disappointing loss for the Hoosiers, a game they really thought they should have won here against Northwestern, but the most important game of the season is coming up, and that's against Purdue. And if there's one thing that can get the Hoosier faithful going, it would be a win at home in a rocking assembly hall against the Boilermakers. For AJ Shub and Robbie Levin, I'm Lucas Mayer, Hoosier Sports Night. While Indiana still leads the overall series 109 to 48, Northwestern has owned the Hoosiers as of late, winning six out of the last seven meetings in the Korean era. Offense wasn't the problem for IU as the Hoosiers shot 50% for the game, with Verdell Jones III scoring 18 to lead the way. The difference was behind the arc and at the free throw line, where the Hoosiers were 14 of 19 compared to Northwestern's 21 for 25. Here's HSN's Courtney Cronin with more on the charity strike. Regardless of how a basketball game is called by the officials, the outcome should never come down to teams exchanging shots at the free throw line. Statwise, Indiana made roughly 74% of their free throws, and it wouldn't appear as a factor in their 70-64 loss to Northwestern. But with four back-to-back -back missed shots by Jeremiah Rivers and Derek Elston with less than four minutes to go, IU gave their comeback away and never recovered. Well, I think the way the game was being called, you, you, you're looking at it, especially in the second half, because here we go again in the second half, and, and, and uh, there was no way we could allow this thing to be what had happened in some of our previous road games, where the free throw discrepancy is just ridiculous in the, in the, in the second halves. So if they're going to call it that way, we've got to keep doing everything we can do to, to, to match, to get into that bonus. Who knows? You make one, one of the four that we missed, you know, who knows what the outcome could be right now. Uh, it's kind of like a, kind of an energy thing. If you make them and and we missed them. I guess we kind of just got down after missing them and just couldn't get back over the hump. They would have been good to go in, but we lost in the first half, didn't play good enough defense, didn't have enough energy. Um, it was just bad defense in the first half. That's all I can say about that. It's something as simple as free throw shooting that is addressed in every practice and not taken lightly by any members of the coaching staff or team. With six days off in between games, Tom Crean feels that a week of hard practice was wasted by the team's inability to make shots from the charity stripe. I, I take responsibility for the free throws not going in. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I don't mean it facetiously. I mean, I didn't miss them, but obviously, we're not. Uh, we're not. Uh, I think we put guys under pressure enough in practice. They're going to carry it over, but we we don't do it in front of 17,000. So um, we practiced hard. We practiced well. Um, we knew all their stuff. Knew everything that we needed to know. Um, just didn't do it. That I couldn't really tell you. I, I don't know. It's just kind of a team mentality thing. I mean, we just got to try harder, really. 
When the free throw discrepancy was as ridiculous as it was, Tom Crean had the mindset to do anything to get into the bonus early, a tactic that just didn't help the Hoosiers either way, as when it came down to it, distracted or not, IU was just not consistent in shooting from the line. At Assembly Hall, I'm Courtney Cronin, Hoosier Sports Night. It's no secret what Northwestern does best offensively, shoot three-pointers. The Hoosiers game plan for this in the week they had off, but still couldn't execute defensively in the defeat. Casey Richards has more on the Hoosier struggles on guarding on the perimeter. Making four more field goals and out-rebounding an opponent by six. Normally a recipe for success. Not for the Indiana Hoosiers, who surrendered 11 three-pointers while hitting just four, continuing a trend of poor perimeter defense in a 70-64 loss to Northwestern. It's my responsibility, and uh, um, there's no question about that, and there's absolutely no way accepting the way we defended in those first 20 minutes. You know, everybody was trying hard to get through screens. It was just whether or not we were calling them out. You know, I think, I think everything was just a communication problem. Stuff that we prepare for all week. Uh, we, we need to do a better job carrying it over. We just didn't play very well in the first half. The problem goes beyond simple mistakes. Rather, there's a team mentality that needs to be developed. And there's not enough um, team accountability on the defensive end. Defensive-minded players do not accept when teammates on the court are not defending the way that they need to defend. I don't know, it's just kind of a team mentality thing. I mean, we just gotta try harder, really. Head coach Tom Crean said post game that if it wasn't against the rules, the Hoosiers would have been back in at midnight, emphasizing defensive fundamentals. From Assembly Hall, I'm Casey Richards, Hoosier Sports Night. When we come back to Hoosier Sports Night, we'll find out some students' opinions on what it is they like about Purdue. Here's a hint, absolutely nothing. Stick around or boil her down. Welcome back. The Lakers had a 3 peat in the early 2000s. The Bulls did it twice in the 90s. And now the Indiana women's swimming and diving team has done the same, winning their third straight Big Ten championship. This win was the most lopsided for IU, who beat their closest competition by 243 points. Senior Brittany Barwegian had a memorable final appearance in the championship by winning the 200 butterfly with a time just over 1 minute and 56 seconds. Freshman Laura Ryan took home the Big Ten title in platform diving with a score just short of 350. HSM would like to extend their congratulations to the women's swimming and diving team. The Indiana baseball team spent their opening weekend in Myrtle Beach at the Caravelle Resort Invitational. The tournament started out with two close losses to Virginia Tech and Boston College before the Hoosiers were victorious against Coastal Carolina in the finale. IU beat the number 18 Shantic Lears 2-1 in 16 innings. Dustin DeMuth's third hit of the game in the top of the 16th drove in Micah Johnson for the Hoosier win. The women's tennis team took part in two sweeps over the weekend, beating both the 34th ranked DePaul Blue Demons and Cleveland State 7-0. The Hoosiers dropped only one doubles match to begin the day against DePaul and went undefeated the remainder of the match. Leslie Haro, Kayla Fujimito, and Evgenia Verdesheva took all three of their singles matches in straight sets against Cleveland State. The IU softball team was in sunny southern Florida over the weekend taking part in the USF tournament. The Hoosiers captured three victories in five games defeating UAB, USF, and Ole Miss. Cassie Grogrev had three home runs in the opening game, Morgan Mello threw a two-hitter to clinch Indiana's second win, and freshman Megan Murphy had a two-run triple leading the Hoosiers past Ole Miss. Morgan Mello struck out 31 batters in 26 innings pitched on the weekend. In another classic Crimson and Gold Cup battle, the Indiana wrestling team boarded the bus and headed north on I-65 to West Lafayette. IU then had a strong start to the match, winning the 125-pound weight class behind redshirt freshman Justin Brooks. Despite the early momentum, the Hoosiers could not stop the Boilermakers in their heavier weight classes and lost the match 21-12. This week's Indiana-Purdue basketball matchup has generated a much-anticipated buzz around campus. Most Indiana students are realists and know that the better basketball team resides a couple hours north of Bloomington. But still, hope springs eternal. And without hope, what else does Hoosier Nation have? Corey Allen hit the streets to hear more from the students on the bitter rivalry. Indiana will look for revenge against their in-state rivals when Purdue visits Bloomington on Wednesday night. This classic rivalry is one of the best in college basketball. And even though the Hoosiers have had losing seasons in recent years, their students still stand strong behind their team. Well, growing up in Indiana, it's always been either an IU fan or Purdue fan, can be both. So it's always been big. But even when we've been bad, the rivalry is still there. I know Purdue 
chance IU sucks at every basketball game. I have friends who go to Purdue and they are no longer my friends because we don't get along. I think, you know, even though we've had a difficult season so far, uh, we've had some tough losses uh, just down to the wire. I think, you know, the rivalry uh, will hopefully give a little spark to the IU basketball team. I just know the rivalry is still there. So, I mean, I guess that's what a rivalry is. Even when it's not, the teams aren't the best, it's still there. With a loud assembly hall, IU students still believe that the Hoosiers have what it takes to pull off the upset and regain in-state pride. Played some great, huge games at home, especially within the conference, so I expect the boys to get things done tomorrow. Definitely. Absolutely. The key to the game is going to be the crowd, the energy that we're bringing, you know what I mean? we got to be loud and proud, you know. It can get very loud and crazy in there if we can get all 17,000 people rowdy. I think it's going to be really important, like, down low in the paint because they have big guys, and I think rebounds are going to be really big. In the last uh, couple of games, the basketball team has kind of just kicked around the three-point line. So if we drive, we have a chance. I like to see Verdell, I like to see him handle the ball, but I like to see him more, like, coming off the screens, getting that shot that he likes right off the elbow. You know, that's what I like to see, wide-open shots off the screen. Defensively, just make it tough on them inside. Obviously, they have the advantage size-wise, so I'm going to double-team the post and, you know, just rotate on defense, play good help side, and we'll be just fine. From the Hyper Gym, I'm Corey Allen, Hoosier Sports Night. With one round of 18 holes still to play, the women's golf team currently sits in 13th place at the Central District Invitational in Paris, Florida. Freshman Lindsey Graham leads the Hoosiers with a 60 over 150 through 54 holes. IU has four other players that sit in the top 75 of the tournament, including Cecilia Orovic, who is in 40th place. Well, that's all the time that we have left on this episode of Hoosier Sports Night, but AJ, there's a lot going on this week. That's right, Sam. The Hoosiers have three huge Big Ten games, and Tandon Doss will be participating in the NFL Draft Day Combine. For you to stay tuned to all these events live, please follow us on Twitter, at HSN on IUSTV. For Samantha Daywig, I'm AJ Shube. Thanks for watching.